this air we love. We got this air we love. Ooh, we got this air we love. We got this air we love. Mm-hmm. Daniel, aerial love. It sets sets the tone for the record. It really gives us a sense of what we're going to get, quite how different it is. Was that your intention, to give us a sense immediately that we're going to be going on a completely different journey? Yeah, that was, that was the intention. And I guess also with, um, with Aerial Love, when um, Joel and I wrote that track, for some reason, instinctually, both of us knew it would be the first single and instantly thought it would be the opening track for the record. Because I think it um, it has a fresh enough palette that it's enough for people to 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 um, understand that it's probably not going to be what they would expect without giving the whole game away too soon. <laughs> it's got some really interesting. I mean, it's got that big, deep bass sort of bottom end sound anyway, and it's quite resonant. Um, yeah. That sort of fits in with a, a style of music that that's that's about atmosphere and about suggestion, about uh, feelings hidden, um, which does again seem to, to touch on some of the points in the album, that um, you're expressing things that, that have been held in for a while. Yeah, I think, I'd, I'd, to be honest, I'm not sure how, um, how deliberate that was, but there seems to be a, um, there's definitely an emotional and lyrical thread throughout throughout the record which is which is about there's a lot of stuff that I'm talking about on this record that I, I I don't think I'd be able to to talk about unless it was in a song form yeah. kind of thing while there's a lot of quietness on the record um, and um, whispering as, as you're saying about aerial love there's there are also moments when you switch from loneliness emptiness and space to something quite firm um, and a preach has, has that quite powerful burst there. Uh, yeah. But even then, it's not big stadium, but it, it's certainly by contrast with what's happening around it. It's Yeah, that preach was, was one of those tracks. It was such a simple, it's just like three chords and I was really trying really hard and it's a lot harder than, than most people think and a lot harder than I thought it was going to be to try and get away with three chords in a song. Um, I guess there's a lot of, um, I was referencing Double Fantasy a lot, uh, John Lennon and just that s- simplicity and that honesty um, was something that really resonated with me. And I guess as soon as that track was kind of coming to fruition or starting to take shape, um, Preet ended up being one of those tracks that I wanted to be quite confessional and and really really honest. It's interesting you refer to uh, to Double Fantasy. I know you, you've you've used that as a reference point for the album. I mean that was an album made by someone who'd been off the scene, had been sitting at home essentially for quite a few years by that point. Yeah. Um, and people had assumed there was well, didn't know whether there was anything anything more, and also whether he actually wanted to come out. Yeah. Uh, in in preach, you, know, you say I, I admit I'm just living just inside my home, but I don't want to live here no more. Yeah. Uh, you're saying, I've locked myself away for various reasons. That's not who I want to be anymore. Yeah, I think it's, um, I think it's um, that I admit I'm living just inside my home is uh, a metaphor for um, just spending my whole life living in my head and um, wanting to wanting to have the I guess the bravery to step out and and say what I wanted to say instead of 
hiding in my head all the time. One of the reasons the record's called Talk is because it took me, it must have taken two or three years for me to even be able to open my mouth and start singing again. There was a lot of, maybe two or three years of just experimenting with sounds and noises and not really writing songs, but writing big kind of pieces of noise. Um, I couldn't find it in myself to, to open my mouth and say something. I was really, I think I was really just stifled and um, I, was, I had quite a serious case of lyrical writer's block and didn't really know how to say what I wanted to say. So I just kind of, I just kind of disappeared, like once again inside my home and just disappeared into this really insular, cold <laughs> electronic music for a while. Well, one thing you do with this record is show that electronic music doesn't have to be cold. Yeah. You know, I mean, this, this is a strongly emotional record and it's a strongly electronic record. Yeah. Um, and those exist quite happily. I mean, Cool on Fire, it's just, it's an electro dance song. Yeah. Um, but with heart and rhythm and emotion, it's, there's a lot of things in there. Yeah, that track, um, that track was kind of a little bit of a, revelation to me because I, I, I didn't know I didn't know that I had that in me either like it's quite a quite a good time kind of song you know <laughs> compared to a lot of the tracks on the record that was um that was actually written in the same 48 hour period with Joel as Aerial Love we had I think we had two days and we wrote both those songs in those two days and Aerial, after Aerial Love was like ah oh, it'd be good if we could have something more upbeat I was listening to lots of um Janet Jackson and 90s R&B and I guess that um, was one of those songs that I'd, I'd kind of started vomiting all that stuff out of my head. It felt like an opportunity to just write something about wanting to get into bed with someone. <laughs> 